के चैम्स ऑफ एग्जाम्स में वेलकम टू द क्वेश्चन सीरीज ऑफ एग्जाम्स में स्टूडेंट्स यू मस्ट हैव एक्सप्लोर आवर वेबसाइट www.examsnet.com दिस साइट इज अ ग्रेट टूल फॉर यू for you for practicing your cbsc class 12 mathematics papers and also your entrance exam question papers students you must download our app the link is given in the description box for an easier access to our given study material so let's start with today's paper we will be solving the cbsc class 12 maths term 2 delhi set 1 paper so let's start with it we'll start with the section a it is like 1 to 6 questions are from section a we'll be doing around 14 questions for this paper so students uh, 1 to 6 question questions carry two marks each let's start with the first question of the paper here we go so you have to find out the integral of dx upon 4x minus x square okay uh, this is two marks question so it won't it's not going to be a very tough one for you let's try it as this can be written as let's say this is i so i can be written as integral of t upon root of uh i'll take uh, you see this can be written as 4x minus x square right so i'll do one thing i'll add and subtract 4 from here so this will become integral dx upon root of 4 minus x square plus sorry minus 4x plus 4 right so this is equal to dx of root of 2 square minus x minus 2 square right now this is the formula for sin inverse x minus 2 upon 2 right plus the constant c see a bottom formula i'm using over here formula is integral dx a square upon x square minus x square this is equal to sin inverse x upon e plus the constant c so according to this this is the answer to the given question right hope you understood that next is question number 2 find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx is equal to e raised to power x minus y plus x square into e raised to power minus y so you have dy dx is equal to this uh sorry this is y right so you can write it as this is equal to e raised to power x into e raised to power minus y plus x square into e raised to power minus y i'll take e raised to power minus y common so e raised to power x plus x square right that was equal to your dy by dx right or you can say dy upon e raised to power minus y is equal to e raised to power x plus x square into dx let's do the integral on both the sides integrating both the sides integrating both sides here you will get this as e raised to power y into dy is equal to e raised to power x dx plus x square dx correct so this is e raised to power y is equal to e raised to power x plus x cube upon 3 plus c that's it this is answer to the question hope you understood that next is question number 3 so it says that uh, x be the random variable which is assuming uh, which assume the values x1 2 3 and 4 such that 2p x is equal to x1 is equal to 3 probability x is equal to x2 is equal to probability x is equal to x3 is equal to 5 times the probability x is equal to x4 now you have to find out the probability distribution for x in this question okay we know one thing that the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1 right here are given that probability x is equal to x1 if i add them plus probability x is equal to x2 plus probability x x is equal to x3 plus the probability that x is equal to x4 the sum of all these 
four probabilities must be equal to one. Correct. Now you are given that probability x is equal to x1 is 3 this is equal to 1 this is equal to 5 this. Right. Let's write that clearly once. So probability twice the probability x is equal to x1 is thrice x is equal to x2. Right. Now what will I do? I'll take all the things, everything in terms of um let's say x3 because this is this is one right i'll take everything in terms of x3 this is equal to five times probability x is equal to x4 so this can be written as probability x is equal to this i'm bringing this in the scene now so this is equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 2 plus probability x is equal to x2 sorry 3 upon 2 plus probability x is equal to x3 plus probability x is equal to x3 upon 5. I hope you got this because I have got all this this and this in terms of p is equal to x is equal to x3. Okay so this will become let's take the LCM wait this has got to be 3 not 2 from here okay all right so now let's take the lcm you will have here the lcm will come out to be 30 okay so you will have the lcm as 30 this will be 15 probability x is equal to x3 i'm taking that common Question number three, let x be a random variable which assumes the values x1, x2, x3 and x4 such that twice the probability x is equal to x1, let's write it here, is equal to thrice probability x is equal to x2. This is equal to probability x is equal to x3. This is equal to five times the probability x is equal to x4. Okay, so here was twice. Fine. Now, see, this is the this is having the coefficient one, so I'll bring everything in terms of probability x is equal to x three. You can write down probability x is equal to x one is equal to probability x is equal to x three upon two. Probability x is equal to x two is equal to probability x is equal to x three upon three. Probability x is equal to x4 is equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 5. Okay, I hope you got these three equations. Uh, like you understood them. These three equations are there. Now one more thing. You know the sum of all the probabilities. That is equal to 1. Which means probability x is equal to x1 plus x is equal to x2 x is equal to x3 that is equal to 1 correct now from 1 2 and 3 from 1 2 and 3 what you have is uh, this was equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 2 probability x is equal to x3 upon 3 probability x is equal to x3 this will remain as such and this is equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 5 now this whole is equal to 1 correct got that so i'll take probability x is equal to x3 common now this will be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 plus 1 by 5 is equal to 1. That gives you probability x is equal to x3. Uh, now let's take the LCM. You will have the 30 over here. So 15 plus 10 plus 30 plus uh, uh, that's got to be 6. This is equal to 1. Or probability x is equal to x3 is equal to 30 upon uh, that's equal to 61. Okay, 
fine so this is probability x is equal to x3 now let's find out probability x is equal to x1 that was equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 2 which is equal to 30 upon 61 into 1 by 2 or that's equal to 15 upon 61. Now probability x is equal to x2 was equal to probability x is equal to x3 upon 3. That means this is equal to 30 upon 61 into 1 upon 3 or that's equal to 10 upon 61. Now probability x is equal to x4 will be given by this divided by 5. So 30 upon 61 into 1 by 5 that's equal to um, 6 upon 61. So we got all the probability distribution. Now let's make the table for that. So probability distribution table. That's Okay, so this is uh, so here I'll take the value of x. It was supposed to have the four values x1, x2, x3, and x4. And the required probability distribution is this is equal to 15 upon 61, that was equal to 10 upon 61. 30 upon 61 and this is equal to 6 upon 61. So this is the answer to the question. This was a required table. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question number 4. Now question number 4, we have a vector problem. A vector is given by this. A dot B is equal to 1 and the cross product of the two vectors is given by J, unit vector J minus unit vector K. Then you have to find out the magnitude of B vector. Let's go for that. You are given first a vector as i plus j plus k. Also, you are given the dot product of the two vectors is equal to 1. And cross product is j minus k. Correct? Uh, first of all, let's find out the magnitude of a vector. That's given by root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1. Let's write squares. That is equal to root 3, right? Magnitude of A cross B vector, this is equal to root of 0 square plus 1 square plus minus 1 square. That's equal to root of 2. Correct. Now, we have a formula. We'll use a formula 1 that is according to formula that uh, the product of the cross the square uh, the sum of the squares of the cross product and the dot products that is equal to the product of their product of the squares of their magnitudes right so now this was equal to root 2 so this is given by root 2 square and this was uh, equal to 1 so this will become 1 square that is equal to a is uh, root 3 square plus this is magnitude of b square so this gives you 3 oh, sorry this, that's 5 is equal to 3 plus magnitude of b square or 2 is equal to magnitude of b square right mm. sorry here was the product this is something wrong I'm um, sorry, this is has to be done. Wait, so many mistakes I have done. So that is equal to 2 square plus 1 is equal to 3 cross B's magnitude. So this is equal to 3 is equal to 3 into magnitude of B vector square or B vector square is equal to 1, which gives you the magnitude of the B vector is equal to 1. And this is what you needed to find out in the question. Right, you need to find out the magnitude of the B vector, which is equal to 1. That's it. Hope you got that. Next is question number 5. If a line makes an angle of alpha, beta and gamma with the coordinate axis, then find out the value of cos 2 alpha plus cos 2 beta plus cos 2 gamma. Fine. So, these are the direction cosines. Let's say 
L is equal to cos alpha. M is equal to cos beta and N is equal to cos gamma. Right, you know one thing that L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1 which means cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma that is equal to 1. And what we need to find out in the question is this. Let's take this to find was cos 2 alpha plus cos 2 beta cos 2 gamma. Uh, this can be written as cos 2 cos square alpha minus 1 2 cos square beta minus 1 2 cos square gamma minus 1. Right. So this can be written like I'll take the two common cos square alpha cos square beta cos square gamma minus 3 and that was equal to 1 so this is equal to 2 minus 3 which is equal to minus 1 right I have used this value over here so the answer to this question is equal to minus 1 hope you understood that Next is question number six. Events A and B are such that probability of A is equal to 1 by 2 and probability of B is equal to 7 by 12 and probability uh, intersect union of A naught B naught is equal to 1 by 4. Okay. So you have to find whether the events A and B are independent or not. You have a choice question over here as well. That is the B part. So I'll go with the B part later. First of all, let's find out, solve the a part. So here you have to find out probability A bar union B bar. You are given this is equal to 1 by 4. Right. Also probability of A is equal to 1 by 2 and probability of B is equal to 7 by 12. Right. So if I pick up this probability A bar union B bar this is equal to probability A intersection B whole bar. So that means this is equal, this is also equal to 1 by 4, right? See, because A bar union B bar is equal to A intersection B whole bar, okay? So this is equal to 1 minus P A intersection B, that's equal to 1 by 4. Here again, I'm using this formula that probability E bar is equal to 1 minus probability of E. Correct. So this becomes probability A intersection B is equal to 1 minus 1 by 4 or that is equal to 3 by 4. Hope you got it till here. Right. Also the product of the two probabilities A and B this is equal to 1 by 2 into 7 by 12 which is equal to 7 by 24, right. Now, this is not equal to probability of A intersection P, right? Mm, yeah, from here, right. So, this is 7 by 24 and this is equal to 3 by 4. They both are not equal. That means, that simply means that A and B are not independent events, right? So, the are not independent events. Hope you got that. So let's move to the B part of the question. We have a choice over here. It says a box B1, a box B1 contains one white ball and uh, three red balls. Another box B2 contains two white and three red balls. One ball is drawn at random from each of the boxes B1 and B2. Then find the probability that the two balls drawn are of the same color. Okay, so let's understand the problem first. You are given two boxes. This is the B part. So here is the box B1 and here is the box B2. B1 contains one white and three red balls. One white, three red balls. And B2 contains two white and three red balls. Correct. If one ball is drawn from each of the boxes and then the probability that the two balls drawn are of the same color is fine. So what probability you want, 
required probability is equal to probability both balls are white plus the probability both balls are red correct so what is the probability that both balls are white that is equal to c there is one by chance one by four chances of getting the white balls and over here there are two by five probability of white balls right similarly for the red balls this is three by four probability of getting red ball and over here you have three by five probability of getting the red ball okay now probability both the balls are white so this is equal to one by four into two by five plus three by four into three by five hope you understood that right so that's equal to uh, 1 by 10 plus uh, 9 by 20, right? Mm, so that's equal to 2 plus 9, that's 11 upon 20. So this is the answer to the question, 11 upon 20. That's it. Find the probability 11 upon 20 is the answer to the question. Hope you understood that. Next is question number 7. So now we are starting with the B section, which is 7 to 10 question, and they're carrying three marks each. You have to integrate problem before you. You have to integrate 0 to pi by 4 dx upon 1 plus tan x. Okay. So let's say this is equal to i, right? So that's equal to 0 to pi by 4 dx upon 1 plus tangent of. See, x can be written as a... Uh, uh, I'm using one, I'm going to use one formula to discuss that, uh, that is limits, integral of limit 0 to a fx dx can be written as 0 to a f of a minus x dx, right? So that is the same formula that I'm going to use now. Uh, so it can be written as pi by 4 minus x dx is already been written, okay? So that's equal to 0 to pi by 4 dx upon see that's equal to this is 1 plus tangent of this mm, so this can be written as a 1 plus now I'm going to open this tangent fine this is equal to tangent pi by 4 minus tangent of x upon 1 plus tangent pi by 4 into tangent of x right what formula is I'm using over here? Let's discuss once. So tan A minus B is equal to tan A minus tan B upon 1 plus tan A into tan B. You know tan pi by 4 is equal to 1. So this will become limit 0 to pi by 4 dx whole upon 1 plus 1 minus tangent of x upon 1 plus tangent of x. Let's take the LCM 0 to pi by 4. That will be 1 plus tangent x dx and the denominator will have a 1 plus tangent x 1 minus tangent x so, this will be equal to integral 0 pi by 4, 1 minus tangent of x upon 2 into dx, right? So, I'll take the 1 by 2 outside. Now, this is pretty easy. 0 to pi by 4, 1 into dx plus 1 by 2 integral tangent x dx limits 0 to pi by 4. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 x pi by 4 to 0 plus 1 by 2 into log of secant x 0 to pi by 4. Hope you got it here. Right now, let's fill in the limits. That's equal to 1 by 4 
1 by 2 into pi by 4 plus 1 by 2 log of secant pi by 4 minus log of secant 0, right? That becomes pi by 8 plus uh, secant pi by 4 is root 2 right and secant 0 is equal to 1 so log of 1 that makes it pi by 8 plus uh, mm, see this is equal to you can write it as half log raised log 2 raised to power 1 by 2 minus 0 so that's equal to pi by 8 plus 1 by 4 log 2 or which is equal to 1 by 4 I am taking common that is equal to pi by 2 plus log of 2. So this is the answer to the question. Hope you got that. This was your question, 3 marks question and this is your answer. Hope you understood. Next is question number 8. Again, you have a choice in this question. This is a 3 marks question. It says vector problem, both are the vector problems. Uh, a and B are two vectors such that A plus B is equal to the magnitude of A plus B is equal to the magnitude of B alone. Then prove that A vector plus 2B vector is perpendicular to A vector. We'll start with the B part later on. First of all, pick up the let's pick up the A part. Right. So you are given in the question that the magnitude of the sum of the two factors is equal to the magnitude of the B factor alone. And you have to prove A plus 2V factor is perpendicular to A vector. Okay. So, I'll start with this. Let's start with the proof. So, you are given that this is equal to B vector, right? Which means... The dot product of this vector is equal to this. See what formula I am using that uh, the dot product of the two same vectors is equal to the magnitude the square of the magnitude of them. Okay. So this, see this is equal to magnitude of A square plus magnitude of B square plus 2 into dot product of these two vectors. That is equal to this. Right. These two will cancel and you have this plus 2 dot product of A, B and this can be written as dot product of A and A plus 2 into A vector into B vector is equal to 0. I am taking the A vector common now. So, you will have A vector plus 2b vector is equal to 0 which simply means see uh, their dot product if the dot product of the two vectors is equal to 0 that means they are uh, perpendicular to each other because if I am talking about general two vectors that is equal to into the sine of angle between them right so if the dot product of two vectors if the dot product of two vectors is zero then they are perpendicular to each other right that means a and a vector plus 2b vector are perpendicular right so that's it we have proved it hence proved hope you understood that let's move to the b part of the same question now so it is given that a and b are unit vectors and theta is the angle between them you have to prove that sine theta by 2 is equal to half of the magnitude of a minus b vector okay Let's uh, go on solving this problem. Here's the B part. So now you are given that you are given A vector and B are 
unit vectors and theta is angle between them. Okay, so now you have to prove sine theta by 2 is equal to half this. Okay, let's go with the proof now. So I'll consider this is equal to the dot product of these two vectors, right? So this is equal to magnitude of A plus B vector, square of B vector minus the dot product of these two vectors, correct? That's equal to this, fine. Now, the magnitude, see, you are given over here, you are given that A and B, they are the unit vectors. If they are unit vector, then their magnitude is equal to 1, right? Here is 1 square, here is 1 square, minus 2. Now, dot product of this is equal to Question number 8, again you have a choice in this question, there are A and B parts given, you can do either of them. This is a 3 marks question, so attempt accordingly and both are the vector problems. I'll start with the A part, it says if A and B are two vectors such that the magnitude of the sum of the two vectors is equal to the magnitude of B vector alone, you are given, let's write it, you are given that this is equal to this and you have to prove that to prove that a vector plus 2 b vector is perpendicular to a vector okay let's go with the proof now so here we start i'll start with what is given to us you are given that a plus b vector magnitude is equal to b vector magnitude as such now if i square on both the sides let's do squaring on both the sides so you will have, see, this can be written as A plus B vector, the dot product of them, right? That is equal to the magnitude of B vector square. See, what I am using over here in this question is the dot product of two same vector is equal to the square of magnitude of that vector, okay? So that's why this can be written like this. Right. Now, let's open this. This is equal to magnitude of A vector plus magnitude of B vector squares of them plus 2 into the dot product of these two vectors. Now, that's equal to magnitude of B vector square. These two will cancel and you have uh, A. See, this can be written using this. This can be written as the dot product of A and A vector plus 2 into A vector plus B vector is equal to 0. I'm taking A vector common, so A plus 2B, that is equal to 0. The dot product of them is 0. So, if dot product of two vectors is 0, then they are perpendicular. to each other, right? Because when I'm talking about the dot product, suppose you have these two vectors, x and y, that is equal to the magnitude of x vector into the magnitude of y vector into the cos of angle between them, okay? So if that becomes zero, that means they are having the angle of 90 degree. Then only cos theta will be zero, okay? Right, so simply that means from this, this means that a plus 2b vector is perpendicular to a vector. Hence proved. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the b part now. b part is again a vector problem. It says if a and b are the unit vectors and theta is the angle between them, then you have to prove that sine theta by 2 is equal to half of uh, a minus b vector magnitude. Okay, let's go. Here's the B part. So now you're given, uh, let's write down. You were given that A and B
the other unit vectors and theta is angle between them. What you have to do is to prove. So what you have to prove is sine theta by 2 is equal to 1 by 2 magnitude of A vector minus B vector. Let's go. Here you have the proof. I'll start with you're given that see, we are not given actually. You know one thing that uh, the magnitude of this I'll discuss one formula first. You know this we did in the last time also that is equal to the dot product of the two similar vectors. So this can be written as a vector minus b vector, the dot product with a minus b vector. Okay. That means a minus b square is equal to magnitude of a square plus magnitude of b vector square minus the dot product of the two vectors. Correct. So that's a vector minus b vector square is equal to, see you are given that a and b are the unit vectors. You are given this. That means if they are unit vectors, that means the magnitude is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1 plus 1 minus 2 a. Now 2 a dot b, this can be written as magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos of angle between them. Hope you understood that, right? So this is equal to 2 minus uh, 2 into 1 into 1 into cos theta. So this is equal to 2 minus 2 cos theta or that is equal to 2 1 minus cos theta. I hope you are getting this. That was equal to this. Correct? Right? Uh, what I am using now, this can be written as 2 into um, 2 sin square. Eight. Uh, I'll write down the formula first. 1 minus cos 2a. 1 minus cos 2a can be written as 1 minus. Sorry, can be written as 2 sin square a. Okay. So, this is equal to 2 sin square theta by 2 or that is equal to 4 sin square theta by 2. That was equal to the magnitude of a minus b vector whole square. Correct. So, what do you have to find out in the question was sin theta by 2. Okay, fine. So, sin theta by 2 is equal to 1 by 4 magnitude of A minus B vector whole square. Or, this was square or sin theta by 2 is equal to 1 by 2 the magnitude of A minus B vector square. This is what you needed to prove. Hence, proved. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question then. Question number 9. Uh, you have to find the equation of the plane passing through the line of intersection of these two planes. R into I plus J plus K is equal to 10 and R into 2I plus 3J uh, minus K plus 4 is equal to 0 passing through this point. Now you are given that plane 1 is R dot i j k and the plane 2 is given by r dot product with 2i plus 3j minus k plus 4 is equal to 0 right this was equal to 10 correct so now equation of the plane which is passing through the line of intersection of these two is given by required Sorry, plane is given by R into I plus J plus K minus 10 plus lambda into R dot product with 2I plus 3J plus 4K plus 4 is equal to 0. Right now, you are given that R is passing through this. Uh, uh, this is the plane is passing through this point. So, R will be given by equation number nine. You have to find the equation of the plane which is passing through the line of intersection of these two planes and it is also passing through this point minus two, three, one. 
Fine. So this general equation for this is given by pi plus lambda, pi 1 plus lambda pi 2 is equal to 0. Okay, what is the pi 1? It is uh, this one. Pi 1 is given by r dot i j i plus j plus k. Uh, 10, I'll take it on the left hand side. So minus 10 is equal to 0, right? And uh, the pi 2 here is given by r dot 2i plus 3j minus k plus 4 is equal to 0, right? So the plane is given by the formula r dot i plus j plus k minus 10 plus lambda into 2i r into 2i 3j minus k plus 4 is equal to 0. That is solving this will give you that is r in 2i plus j plus k plus 2 lambda. I am taking the r common now. Okay. Plus 2 lambda i 3 lambda j minus lambda k minus 10 plus 4 lambda is equal to 0. Let's say this is equation 1. Okay, now you are given in the question that this equation 1 passes through this plane passes through minus 2, comma 3, comma 1. As this plane, this plane passes through minus 2, comma 3, comma 1. So, this will be minus 2 i plus 3 j plus K, the dot product with i plus j plus k plus 2 lambda i 3 lambda j minus lambda k minus 10 plus 4 lambda is equal to 0. Okay. I hope you are clear till here. Let's solve it further. So this will be equal to now I'll if I can um, see this will be 2i plus 3j plus Okay, dot product with 2 lambda plus 1 i, 3 lambda plus 1 j, 1 minus lambda k minus 10 plus 4 lambda is equal to 0. So, let's uh, do the dot product now. Minus 2 into this. This gives me, um, okay, this will be uh, minus 4 lambda minus 2 and uh, here will be plus 3 into 3 lambda this is 9 lambda plus 3 plus 1 minus lambda plus 4 lambda minus 10 is equal to 0. Now let's solve it further you will have uh, um, this is uh, minus 4 lambda plus 9 lambda minus lambda plus 4 lambda. So, these two will cancel first. Minus 2 plus 3 plus 1 minus 10 is equal to 0. This gives you 8 lambda uh, and uh, this is equal to minus 12 minus 8 is equal to 0 which gives you lambda is equal to 1. So, we got the value of lambda is equal to 1. Now, let's replace this lambda over here in this equation. Mm, yeah, okay. So, replacing lambda is equal to 1 in equation 1, this one. All right. So, what will you get replacing lambda 1 into in equation 1? We get R i plus j plus k plus 2i plus 3j minus k minus 10 plus 4 is equal to 0. This gives you R dot product with this is 3i 4j and 0. So, I'll leave it as such. Uh, minus 6 is equal to 0. So, this is the required equation of the plane. Hope you have understood that. Let's write down the answer to the question is R dot product with 3i plus 4j is equal to 6. That's it. Hope you have understood that. Let's move to the next question then.
Question number 10. Now, this is again in the choice question. You are given A and B parts. You can solve either of them. Both are integral problems. The A part is integral of, uh, let's say this is equal to I. I'm going to solve the A part. Integral of E raised to power X into sine 2X dx. Let's say this is the first and this is the second function. Now, I'll be integrating, uh, using integrating by parts. What do you get? This I will be equal to Mm, this is the first function into integral of second minus integral of derivative of first into integral of second. Okay. So now, uh, see what I'm, I'm doing uh, some assumptions now. Let u is equal to sine 2x and uh, v is equal to e raised to power x. Then you have du upon dx is equal to 2 cos 2x and here dv by dx will be equal to e raised to power x only. Hope you are clear till here. So now this given first equation becomes from 1. You have uh, integral u v dx is equal to u into integral of v dx minus integral of du by dx integral of v into dx dx. Okay. So, i is equal to e raised to power x mm, into sine 2x minus integral of 2 into cos 2x into e raised to power x into dx, right? We have solved this one. Now, let's say over here, this is the first and this is the second function. Now, again, integrating by parts. Again, integrating by parts, you have i is equal to e raised to power x sine 2x minus 2 cos 2x integral of e raised to power x dx minus integral of derivative of cos 2x integral of e raised to power x dx dx. Correct? So this i is equal to now this is equal to e raised to power x sine 2x minus 2 e raised to power x cos 2x plus 2 integral of e raised to power x sine 2x dx. Fine. So now from equation 1, again from equation 1, you have i is equal to e raised to power x sine 2x minus 2 e raised to power x cos 2x plus 2. Or Here is i because this is equal to i. This I must write. So, okay, fine. So, this becomes i is equal to e raised to power x sine 2x minus 2 e raised to power x cos 2x minus 4i or 5i is equal to e raised to power x sine 2x uh, minus 2 e raised to power x cos 2x. Here, i is equal to 1 by 5 e raised to power x sine 2x minus 2 e raised to power x cos 2x plus c. So this is the value of i. Hope you understood this. This is the answer to the question. Right? So this is the a part of the question. Now this is this question is in choice. You can either do the a or the b part. Let's go to solve the b part now. So here you are. Your b part is uh, what was the statement? 2x upon you have to find out the integral of 2x divided by x squared plus 1 into x squared plus 2 dx. Uh, in this question, I'll put x squared plus 1 is equal to t. This gives me 2x dx is equal to dt. So if I take this as i, this i becomes dt upon t into t plus 1, right? I'll be using the partial integration method now. Partial integration method.
i is equal to integral 1 upon t minus 1 upon t plus 1 dt. All right. So when I will find the integral, this will be equal to log t minus log of t plus 1 plus c. This gives you log of x square plus 1 minus log of x squared plus 2 plus c, right? Because t was equal to x squared plus 1, correct? So, that's equal to log of x squared plus 1 upon x squared plus 2 plus c. So, simple as that. This is the answer to the second part of this question, not the part, actually second option of this question. So, hope you understood both of them. Let's move to the next question number 11. Now, we are moving to the C section. You are having 11 to 12, uh, 11 to 14 questions from the C section only. They carry four marks each. So, now we have a probability problem before us. It says three persons A, B, C apply for a job of manager in a private company. Chances of the selection are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 4. Probability that A, B, C can introduce changes to increase the profits of a company are this this and this respectively if increase in the profit does not take place then probability that is due to the appointment of a is what okay uh, first of all in the question let's say e be the event the change does not take place okay or E1 be the event when A is appointed and E2 when B is appointed, E3 when C is appointed, correct? So clearly from here, the probability of E1 in this question, it is equal to 1 upon 1 plus 2 plus 4. So... 1 upon 7. Probability of event E2 to happen is 2 upon 7 and the probability of event 3 to happen is equal to 4 upon 7. Right? Now what do you need to find out? We need to find if increase in profit does not take place. Okay. The probability that it is due to the appointment of A. Fine. So first of all, I'll be using the base theorem for this. According to the Bayes theorem, probability, according to the uh, question, we have to find out this probability E1 upon E, right? Uh, yeah, probability E1 upon E, this is what we need to find out. And the formula is equal to probability E upon E1 into probability E1 whole divided by probability E upon E1 into probability E1 plus probability E upon E2 into probability E2 plus probability E upon E3 into probability of E3. We need to find these three terms. Let's go to find them and then I will put them in this equation 1. So probability E upon E1 is equal to 1 minus um, that's uh, given to us 0 0.8. 0 0.2 e upon e2 e upon e3 this is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.5 and this is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3 which is equal to 0 0.7 now let's fill all of fill these in equation 1 you will get uh, 0. 2 into 1 by 7 whole divided by 0 0.2 into 1 by 7 plus 0 0.5 into 2 by 7 plus 0 0.7 into 4 by 7. Okay, so this gives you, um, okay, that's equal to 2 upon 70, 2 upon 70 plus uh, 10 upon 70 plus 28 upon 70. So you will be left with here will be 2 upon 2 plus uh, 
uh, 10 plus 28, that's going to be 40. So 1 by 20, this is the required probability and our answer to the question. Hope you understood this, right? Next, let's move to the question number 12. So now you have to find the area bounded by the curves. Y is equal to modulus of X minus 1 and Y is equal to 1 using integration. So for these type of problems, always you need to make the graph its best possible way to solve the sum because you get a clear idea of what the question, what the figure looks like. So this is the line Y is equal to 1. Right, and Y is equal to modulus of X minus 1. Uh, see, when I'm putting y, is, let's make the table for x and y in this case. Uh, when you're putting x is equal to 0, y is 0. When you are putting x is equal to, uh, sorry, not, wait. When you're putting x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And uh, mm, when you're putting x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1. And uh, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, so on. Correct. So, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. So, it's over here. Right? And when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1. So, for this is the point 2, comma 0. And this is the point 2, comma 1. So, this... is what the graph looks like okay so when x is equal to 3 y is equal to 2 so this graph moves like this i don't need this much part i am concerned about this portion only you have to find out area of this particular region okay all right so this is the line y is equal to modulus of x minus 1 hope you are clear with the figure correct now let's write down the points of intersection of these. So this is the 0, 1. We have two points of intersection. That is 0, 1 and 2, 1. These are the two points of intersection of the lines. Points of intersection of y is equal to 1 and y is equal to x minus 1. Correct? Required area. Uh, let's name them. So, if I say this is the point A, this is the point B, and this is the point uh, C. So, required area. Is area ABC, triangle area ABC. Or uh, you can say this is the AB, area ABC A. Because I am forming a closed loop over here. So, area a, B, C or A, B, C, A is given by, see over here you are having this line. So 1 into dx minus, because this portion, this 1, y is equal to 1, this is going to cover this whole portion, right? And I'm not interested in this much part. I have to erase this. I hope you got my point, right? So that is why I'm doing a minus over here. Minus modulus of x minus 1 dx so here i'm moving 0 to 2 and in this part i have to move 0 to 2 again i hope you're clear with this okay uh, now this is equal to x the limits uh, 0 to 2 minus uh, this is equal to uh, see the modulus i can write this modulus as minus i'll break it up so this will be 0 to 1 when x is between 0 to 1, so it is denoted by minus of x minus 1 dx plus 1 to 2 x minus 1 dx. So this is equal to 2 minus 0 minus, uh, let's find out the integral. Now this is equal to minus x minus 1 square upon 2 plus x minus 1 square upon 2 limits 0 to and here it was 0 to 1. Okay. So that's equal to 2 minus. This is equal to 0. Minus of 1 by 2 plus. Um, this is equal to 1 by 2. Minus 0. So that's 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. Or this is equal to. Um, wait. 
that was here is some minus problem wait let me check so this is equal to minus was here and this minus correct and uh, yeah okay so now this becomes Two minus one by two plus one by two, which is equal to one. Okay, so this is the answer to the question. The area of the shaded portion is one square units. Hope you understood. Let's move to the next question number thirteen. Then now again you have a choice in this question. It says solve the following differential equation: y minus sine square x dx plus tangent or uh, tangent x dy is equal to zero. Or you can solve this problem. I'll start with the part A first. So A part is you are given y minus sine square x dx tangent x dy is equal to zero. Now dividing the whole equation by Tangent x dx, what you get is uh, this is y upon tangent x into yeah, y into tangent x. Uh, wait, y minus sine square x upon tangent x into dx upon dx plus tangent x into dy upon tangent x into dx, right? So, this will be equal to y tangent of x, y divided by tangent of x minus sine square x upon tangent x plus dy by dx is equal to 0, okay? Over zero, so that becomes uh, dy by dx, and uh, this is equal to plus y upon tan x. And uh, see, this will be equal to sine into cos. Sine x upon cos x. See what happened here was sine square x upon tangent x. This is equal to sine square x into cos x upon sin x so sin and sin will cancel you have sin x into cos x hope you got till here right and uh, now this equation becomes dy by dx plus y into cortex is equal to sin x into cos x now let's compare it with Compare it with dy by dx plus the function of xp uh, into y is equal to q of x. You get here px is equal to cot x and qx is equal to sine x into cos x. Now here the integrating factor that's equal to e raised to power integral of cot x dx is equal to e raised to power log of sine x which is equal to sine x only. So the solution is so the solution is y into sine x y of uh, y into sine x minus uh, integral of sine x into sine x cos x dx plus c. If I put to the sin x is equal to t. So you have cos x dx is equal to dt. Now it is the integral of the right hand side. It is the question number 13. Now again you have a choice in this question. A and B parts are given. I'll start with the A part. Solve the following differential equation. You are given y minus sin square x dx. plus tangent of x dy is equal to 0. Now, let's write both the sides by tangent x into 
dx. What do you get? You'll get y minus sine square x. Uh, I'll write here. Mm, okay. Upon tangent x dx into dx uh, plus tangent x into dy upon tangent x into dx is equal to 0. Tangent tangent will cancel and dx dx will cancel. Now, so this is y upon tangent x minus sine square x. Tangent x can be written as sine x into cos x plus dy by dx is equal to 0. So, here you have y into cotangent x plus dy by dx is equal to here. This is equal to sin x into cos x. Or you can write it as uh, dy by dx plus cot x into y is equal to sin x into cos x. If I compare it with the general equation, dy by dx plus px into y is equal to qx, where px is equal to cot x and qx is equal to sin x into cos x. So, integrating factor will be given by integral of e raised, sorry, e raised to power x. Integrating factor is equal to e raised to power integral of cot x dx, which is equal to e raised to power log of sin x, which is sin x only. So, the solution is given by y into sin x, y of sin x is equal to sin x into sin x cos x dx plus c. If I put sin x is equal to t, I get cos x dx is equal to dt. It is integral of the right hand side, correct? So, it is, let's write down, it is integral of the right hand side. So, y into sin x is equal to uh, t square into dt plus c which is equal to t square cube plus t cube upon 3 plus c or t was equal to sin x so this is sin x cube upon 3 plus c. Hope you are clear, clear till here. Therefore, this was equal to y sin x. Therefore, y is equal to, I am dividing both the sides by sin x, y is equal to sin square x upon 3 plus c upon sin x. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the second part, not actually the second option for this question. You have to find the general solution of this differential equation. So, let's go with this. Let's write the equation first. The given equation is given by x cube plus y cube dy. Okay. x cube plus y cube dy is equal to x square y into dx. Okay, mm, fine. So, here I can write down dy by dx is equal to x square y upon this, this is a differential, uh, sorry, this is the homogeneous differential equation. Right. Therefore, let's put y is equal to vx or dy by dx is equal to v plus x into this. First function to derivative of second plus second function to derivative of first. This is the one. So, that is you can write it as uh, v plus x dv upon dx is equal to. See, this is equal to now I'm again. What was real y? That was this equation. Where is y? Yeah. dy by dx is this. So, this is equal to um, Okay, let's get back to here. Fine. So, this is equal to dy by dx. Let's write it clearly. What was dy by dx? That was equal to this. x square y v 
plus x into dv by dx is equal to x square y upon x cube y cube y was equal to this vx so this is equal to x square into vx upon x cube v cube x cube so i'm taking x cube common from here into v x cube 1 plus v cube so this is equal to 1 upon 1 plus v cube that was equal to v plus x into dv by dx so here you have dv by dx is equal to v upon this minus v or uh, this will be mm, v minus uh, v minus v raised to power 4 upon 1 plus v cube or this is equal to minus v raised to power 4 upon 1 plus v cube this is equal to here i missed writing x x into dv by dx i hope you're clear till here correct so um, i'm falling short of space fine anyways so this is equal to 1 plus v cube upon v raised to power 4 into dv is equal to minus dx upon x hope you're clear till here okay so this gives you 1 upon v raised to power 4 plus 1 upon v dv is equal to minus dx upon x now integrating on both sides integrating both sides what we get is minus 1 upon 3 v cube plus log of v is equal to minus log of mod of x plus c which is equal to this what was v equal to v uh, y was equal to vx right and the v is equal to y upon x so this becomes minus x cube upon 3 y cube plus log of y upon x is equal to minus log of x plus c right now mm, okay i will take this sum to somewhere i have a space over here so i'm going to solve the rest of the sum in this portion okay okay so i'll write the last statement which we wrote over here this statement let's try this again once it is minus x cube upon 3 y cube plus log of y upon x is equal to minus log of x plus c or this is minus x cube upon 3 y cube plus log y minus log x is equal to minus log x plus c or uh, they will cancel okay you have a uh, log of y minus x cube upon 3 y cube is equal to c hope you got this this is the answer to the b part of this question hope you understood this so let's move to the last question of this set of paper. Here's a case study before us. It says two motorcycles A and B are running at a speed more than allowed speed on the roads represented by the lines this and this respectively. Now based on the above information you have to answer the questions. The first one is find the shortest distance between the given lines. Okay. Fine. So here first of all I'll say hmm, I'm going to solve the A part. Let's say R be given by A plus lambda B. Now, if I compare the given R with the given equation, if I compare them with the given equation, you have here R is equal to lambda into this I plus 2J minus 3K. And uh, R is equal to the second one. This is 3I. 3j plus mu 2i j and k okay so from here you have uh, see a1 if i come now go for this one a1 is equal to 0 and b1 if i'm comparing using this one b1 is given by i plus 2j minus k 
okay similarly this is a2 and this is b2 let's write it a2 is 3 i plus 3j and b2 is equal to 2i plus j plus k right so a2 minus a1 this is equal to um, a2 minus a1 this is simply equal to 3i plus 3j and uh, b1 cross product of that then is given by i'm using the matrix method 1 2 minus 1 2 1 1 so this is uh, let's solve i2 plus 1 minus g 1 plus 2 1 minus 4 so this is equal to 3i minus 3j minus 3k therefore the shortest distance between lines is given by a2 minus a1 dot product with the cross product of b1 and b2 divided by the magnitude of the cross product of these two vectors okay so this is equal to 3i plus 3j dot product with 3i 3j minus 3k whole divided by modulus of 3i 3j minus 3k so that's equal to see this is equal to 9 mm, minus 9 right and minus 0 divided by root of 3 square minus 3 square minus 3 square so this is nothing but 0 because they will cancel out and the answer to the question is 0 units that is the lines will intersect with each other therefore lines will intersect with each other hope you got that now the second part find the point at which the motorcycles may collide okay so now you have to find out the point at which motorcycles may collide with each other rewriting the given lines in the cartesian form given lines In the Cartesian form, this is x upon 1 is equal to y upon 2 is equal to z upon minus 1 is equal to lambda. And x minus 3 upon 2, y minus 3 upon 1, z upon 1 is equal to mu. Coordinates of random point on these lines are of random point. Or these lines are lambda, 2 lambda, minus lambda and uh, this is for P. And for Q, this is 2 mu plus 3, mu plus 3 and mu. Now, as the lines, they are intersecting. So, P and as the lines are intersecting. So, P and Q may collide. May just uh, coincide. Right. So, that means this is equal to this. Lambda is equal to 2 mu plus 3. Which gives you uh, also 2 lambda is equal to mu plus 3. Or you are given minus lambda is equal to mu. That's it. You got minus lambda is equal to mu. These are the three equations from here. So on solving one and two, let's say I'll use this. So this is minus mu is equal to two mu plus three. Or that gives you mu is equal to minus one. If mu is equal to minus one, then lambda is equal to one. Therefore, the required point of intersection is see it was lambda 2 lambda 
minus lambda. So this is equal to 1, 2 and minus 1. So the motorcycles may collide at this point and this is the answer to the question. Hope you have understood this. So with this, we have completed all the 14 questions which were having some choice as well of class 12, Mathematics 2022, term 2, Delhi set 1 paper. Hope you have understood that well and if you have any problem, you can just message us. And students, don't forget to visit our website www.examsnet.com. For practicing your CBSE class 12 examinations as well as many entrance exam question papers. You must download our app also. The link is available in the description box. So very best of luck. Keep shining. Keep rising high. Bye. Hey, champs of ExamsNet. Welcome to the question series of ExamsNet. Students, you must have explored our website www.examsnet.com. This site is a great tool for you to help uh, passing your CBSC class 12 examinations as well as in cracking your entrance exam question papers as well. Students, you must download our app. The link is available in the description box. So here we start with the CBSC class 12 mathematics term 2 Delhi set 2 paper. Only five questions are there in this particular video, which we'll be solving. So please, there's one thing to note, except these all questions are from set one. So do watch our video for the set one questions as well. We are starting with the section A126 question. They carry two marks. Let's start with this. So here we go with the question number one, vector problem. We have to find the vector equation of the line passing through a point with the position vector this and parallel to the line joining these two points let's go all right so let's start with it so now according to the question if i draw this uh, um this is 2i minus j plus k this is somewhat like this this line 2i minus j plus k and uh, the another one you have uh, minus i plus 4j plus k and parallel to the line which is joining these two points. So these two points will be written weight like this. So this point is given by this and i plus 2j plus 2k. So the given points are minus 1, 4, 1, and 1, 2, 2. These are the given points. Hope you're clear till here. Now, direction ratios. Are 1 minus of minus 1 comma 2 minus 4 2 minus 1 right this gives you 2 minus 2 and 1 so the position vector parallel to the required line is parallel to the required line is given by 2i minus 2j plus K. If you have the R vector as A plus lambda V vector, so this is given by 2i minus j plus k plus lambda 2i minus 2j plus k. So this is the answer to this question. Hope you understood that. This is a two marks question. So this is the answer. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Uh, so question number two, there's nothing displayed over here. Actually, now we are going to start with section B ahead. Section B, uh, this is uh, going to carry your three marks question. So the very next question which we are going to solve is your uh, this question. Uh, now you're given A vector as this, B as this vector and C as this vector. If N is a unit vector such that A dot product of A N is equal to zero and the dot product of B N is equal to zero, then you have to find out the magnitude of C dot product of c and n vector 
okay uh fine so let's write down you are given a is uh, i plus j b is i minus j and c i plus j plus k you are also given that the dot product of a and n is equal to zero and uh, b and n is equal to zero which means if the dot product of them is uh, zero which means that a vector is perpendicular to the n unit vector and also b vector is perpendicular to n unit vector right so let's find the cross product of these two vectors this will be given by i j k 1 1 0 and uh, here you have 1 minus 1 0 which gives you simply this is equal to i into 0 minus 0 minus j into 0 minus 0 plus k into minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to minus 2k vector okay that is the cross product of a and b vector let's find the magnitude of it this will be given by root of minus 2 square which is equal to 2 only right now the unit vector which is perpendicular to a cross b unit vector perpendicular to a cross b is n is given by a cross b divided by the magnitude so this is equal to minus 2k vector upon 2 which is equal to minus k vector okay so c vector dot n cap this is given by what is c vector equal to i plus uh, j plus k dot product with minus k vector. This is equal to um, 0 plus 0 minus uh, 1. Right. Right. Let's find the magnitude. So this is the one. Which is equal to 1. We have to find out the magnitude of C and N vector. This is equal to 1. So the answer to the first part of the question is equal to 1. Hope you have understood. Now let's uh, start with the B part of this. A B part not B option of the same sum. Again a vector problem. You are given that uh, A and B are unit vectors. Which are having an angle theta is equal to 30 degree between them. You have to find the area of the parallelogram with uh, this and this as adjacent sides. Fine, let's start. I'll erase the screen so we don't fall short of the space. Uh, you are given that A and B are unit vectors. So that means magnitude of A and B vectors is equal to 1. Also, if I draw them on the parallelogram. Uh, so let's say this is A, B, C, D. So this is given by A plus 3B and this is 3 a plus b vector area of the parallelogram is given by area of parallelogram is given by the magnitude of the cross product of a b and a d so this is a plus 3 b cross a plus b so this makes it uh, a into 3a vector 3b so this is the cross product that's 0 plus uh, mm, 9 into Mm, yeah, B vector into A vector plus this, right? So that is equal to, this can be written as a 9B cross A minus B cross A because I'm changing, here will be minus sign introduced because I'm reversing their direction. So that is equal to 8 into this 
Fine. Let's say this is equal to 1. Now, since, you see, whatever here I have used in this question, let's discuss that. Let's write once. Uh, A cross B vector, this is equal to minus of B vector cross A vector. Also, I have used that uh, the cross product of the two vectors, same vectors is equal to 0. Okay. All right. So, now, Let's talk about area of parallelogram that is equal to 8B cross A, which is 8 into magnitude of B vector into magnitude of A vector into the sine of angle between them. So this is 8 into 1 into 1 sine angle between them was 30 degree. That makes it uh, 1 by 2. That is 4 square units. So the answer to this part of the question is four square units. Hope you have understood this. Let's move to the next question then, question number four. So now you have to evaluate from zero to five by two, one upon this, okay? Three marks question, zero to one limits, one upon one plus tangent x raised to power two by three into dx. So this can be written zero to five by two, one upon, I'll open the tangent. So this is sine, raised to power 2 by 3x cos raised to power 2 by 3x dx which is integral so this is equal to i pi by 2 uh, this will be cos 2 by 3x upon sine 2 by 3x cos 2 by 3x dx Right, so this is, see, sine, of course, if I want to change into sine, it can be done as sine raised to power 2 by 3, pi by 2 minus x, whole divided by cos raised to power 2 by 3, pi by 2 minus x, sine 2 by 3, pi by 2 minus x into dx. See, what I'm formula over here I'm using, I'm using, 0 to a fx dx is equal to limit 0 to a f of a minus x dx. So this formula I'm using here the upper limit was pi by 2. So I have subtracted that from pi by 2. Okay. So that was your equal to i as well. So this i is integral 0 to pi by 2 mm, sine 2 by 3 x c yeah okay so upon sine 2 by 3x plus cos raised to power 2 by 3x so let's say this is number 2 and let's say this is number 1 Right, adding one into you have two i is equal to integral limits pi by two sine two by three x plus cos two by three x divided by this plus six dx. So this two will cancel and you have zero to pi by two. 1 into dx that's equal to 2y which gives you 2i is equal to x limits 0 to pi by 2 or 2i is equal to pi by 2 minus 0 or i will be equal to pi by 4. So the value of this given question is equal to pi by 4. This is the answer to the question. Hope you have understood that. Let's move to the last question of uh, this particular uh, paper set to section C. Now, this is a four marks question. Question says, in a factory machine, A produces 30% of the total output. Machine B produces 25% and the machine C produces the remaining output. Defective items produced by A, B and C are 1, 1.2 and 2% respectively. An item is picked at random from the day's output and found to be defective. You have to find the probability 
that it was produced by machine B. Okay. So, first of all, if I say probability E1 represents the uh, item produced by A, right? So, A produces 30%, which means it is equal to 3500. Similarly, PE2 that represents item produced by B, which is equal to 25%. And probability E3 is item produced by C which is the remaining so 30 and 25 this is 55 remaining is 45 percent okay so this is 45 by 100 now the probability of a upon e1 is equal to 1 by 100 for the defective it's given for B, it's 1.2 and for C, it is 2%. Probability A upon E2 is the 1.2% and for C, sorry, this is the, uh, here it's got to be A. Question number five, section C. Now this is going to carry your four marks. So that means this question is of four marks. It says in a factory machine, A produces 30% of the total output, B produces 25% of the total output, C produces the remaining output. Defective items produced by machines A, B and C are 1, 1.2 and 2% respectively. An item is picked at random from a day's output and found to be defective. You have to find the probability it was produced by machine p okay so okay fine so first of all let's say p e1 this represents that the item is produced by a machine this is 30 percent so this is equal to 30 upon 100 similarly p e2 this is the item produced by b which is 25 percent so 25 upon this and c produces the remaining so c produces 100 minus 25 plus uh, 30, which is equal to 45%. So, P E3 is item produced by C, 45 upon 100%. Okay. Now, uh, okay, fine. Let's say that uh, A represents here, if I'm using this A, A represents that the item is defective. This variable A represents item is defective. Therefore, probability of uh, developing a defective item by A. Uh, let's say, okay, let's change the variable over here. Let's say X. Wait. Let's say X. So, probability X upon E1, that is a defective item is produced by machine A, is 1% 1 or 1 upon 100. Probability defective item is produced by machine B, this is equal to 1.2%. And the probability defective item is produced by machine C, this is equal to 2%. Okay. Now, probability or you can say required probability. That is a defective item is produced by machine B or E2. Wait. Required probability is probability that the B machine produces a defective item. So this is given as probability E2 multiplied probability E uh, x upon E2 whole divided by probability E1 into X upon E1 plus probability E2 into probability X upon E2 plus probability E3 into probability X upon E3. So this is equal to 25 upon 100 into 1.2 upon 100 divided by 30 upon 100 into 1 upon 100, 25 
upon 100 into 1.2 upon 100, 45 upon 100 multiply 2 upon 100. Okay. So this makes uh, 25 into 1.2 divided by 30 plus 25 into 1.2, 45 into 2. This makes uh, 30 divided by 30 plus 30 plus 90, which is equal to 1 by 5. So this is the answer to the question. The required probability is 1 by 5. That means out of 5, day, this is there is one chance that the probability of um, uh, an item is defective is produced by machine D. So with that, students, we have completed, uh, actually, there were four questions only for this uh, particular uh, set, set two, CBSE class 12, March 2022, term two, Delhi, set two paper. So a very best of luck. Hope you have understood that well. Don't forget to visit our website, www.examsnet.com. You must download our app. The link is available in the description box. A very best of luck for your exams. Keep rising, keep shining high. Bye. Hey, Champs of Exams. Net. Welcome to the question series of Exams. Net. Students, you must have explored our website, www.examsnet.com. This site is a great tool for you to practice your class 12 uh, question papers as well as your entrance exam question papers. You must download our app. The link is available in the description box. So, if you start with the class 12 CBSC, maths 2022, term 2, set 3. Delhi paper, you already have done your set one and set two papers. Now I'll be discussing only the questions which are not there in set one and set two. Okay, there will be only four questions in this particular video, which will be dealing with the, a few of uh, the questions which are not there in set one and set two. A very best of luck. Let's start with that. Here is the question number one. The Cartesian equation of the line AB is given by this. You have to find the direction cosines of the line parallel to AB. Okay, let's go with that. So the given line is 2x uh, minus 1 upon 12 is equal to y plus 2 upon 2, z minus 3 upon 3. Or uh, this can be written as 2 into x minus 1 by 2 upon 12 is equal to y plus 2 upon um, which? Upon 2 is equal to z minus 3 upon 3. Or... Uh, x minus 1 by 2 upon 6 is equal to y plus 1 by 2 upon 2, z minus 3 upon 3. So the direction ratios are six two one three. What is the magnitude of it? This is root of 6 square, 36, 2 square, 4 plus 9, which is 7. Okay. And direction cosines are given by 6 upon 7, 2 upon 7 and 3 upon 7. This is what you needed to find out in the question find the direction cosines of the line parallel to AB. So the line parallel to AB will have the same direction cosines as this 6 by 7, 2 by 7 and 3 by 7. Hope you got that. Next is question number 2. Now you are going to have the 3 marks questions over here. So you have to find out the integral of this given function. Let's say this is equal to i. I'll solve this. Now this i can be written as limits 1, 2, 3, root of x divided by root of x plus root of 4 minus x dx. This can be written as limits 1, 2, 3, root of x divided by, uh, now this can be written, um, wait, this will be equal to root of 4 minus x plus root of 4 minus 4 plus x dx. This is limit 1, 2, 3 root x upon 4 minus x plus 4 minus of 4 minus x dx. See what I have used over here, um, limit a to b fx dx is equal to limit a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. So now using this, this can be written as this particular uh, equation can be written as i is equal to integral limits 1 to 3 root of 
4 minus x upon 1 plus 3, uh, that is 4 minus 4 minus x plus mm, yeah, and uh, that was equal to your uh, 4 minus 4x Question number two, you are dealing with the section B now. Now this question is going to have the three marks. This particular question is three marks question. Let's say this is equal to I. So this I can be written as integral one, two, three. Let's write, write the statement root of X plus the root of X plus this minus DX. So this can be written as, see what, are, there's one formula I'll be using. Let's discuss that. Integral A to B, F x dx is equal to limit a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. So this i is equal to 1, 2, 3. This will be a 1 plus 3, that is 4, 4 minus x divided by, uh, this will be 4 minus x again plus root of 4 minus 4 minus x dx, which is equal to Integral 1, 2, 3, root of 4 minus x divided by root of 4 minus x plus root of x dx. Let's say this is number 2. This was equal to your i and uh, this was your 1. Adding 1 and 2. You have 2i is integral limit 1 to this x plus 4 minus x divided by x plus this dx. So numerator and the denominator will cancel out. You have a 2i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 1 into dx or x 1 into 3, 1, 2, 3. So 2i is equal to 3 minus 1 or 2i is equal to 2 or i is equal to 1. This is the answer to the question. The integral was equal to 1. Hope you have got that. Next is question number 3. You have to find the distance of the point 2, 3, 4 measured along this line from this plane. Question number 3. You have to find the distance of the point 2, 3, 4 measured along this line from this plane. Alright. So, equation of the line through 2, 3, 4 and parallel to the given line, this is given by x minus 2 upon 3, y minus 3 upon 6, z minus 4 upon 2. Let's say this is equal to lambda. Okay, a constant. They are equal. And let's say this is equal to lambda constant. Now, any point on this line will be given by 3 lambda plus 2, 6 lambda plus 3, 2 lambda plus 4. Now, uh, since we have to find out if this uh, point also lies on this plane, if this point also lies on the plane 3x to y to z plus 5 is equal to 0, then how will it react? This will be 3 into 3 lambda plus 2, 2 into 6 lambda plus 3, 2 into 2 lambda plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 0. And this gives you 9 lambda plus uh, 6, 12 lambda plus 6, 4 lambda plus 8 plus 5 is equal to 0. Mm, this will be 21, 25 lambda plus uh, 25 
is equal to 0, that gives you lambda is equal to minus 1. So what does this point becomes now? Now, point becomes, uh, what is that? It was 3 lambda plus 2. Let's write down 3 lambda plus 2, 6 lambda plus 3. So this will be equal to minus 1 plus 2, uh, 6 minus 6 plus 3 minus 2 plus 4. So that's uh, minus 3, sorry. Okay, this is minus 1, minus 3 and 2. So this is the point and the required distance. Will be equal to root of. See, the point was 2, 3, 4, and this, you have to find the distance between these two points. So, 2 minus of minus 1, this is plus 1, 3 minus of minus 3 plus 3, 4 minus of uh, 2, this is square, that is equal to 9, and 36, and 4, that is 49, or 7. So, 7 units is the answer to the question. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question then. Question number four. Now, this is a four marks question. It says there are two boxes as box one and two. Box one contains three red and six ball, black balls. Box two contains five red and five black balls. So, here is box one and two. This box contains three red and six black. This contains five red and five black balls. One of the two boxes is selected at random and a ball is drawn at random. The ball is found to be red. You have to find the probability that this red ball comes from the box two. Okay. Okay. Wait. Fine. So, let even be the uh, event of selection from box one and E2 from box two and A, B the event of getting a red ball from the selected box. Therefore, probability E1 is given by um, selection from one one. This is one by two and the probability of selecting uh, um, box 2 is also 1 by 2 because there are two boxes. The probability of either is 1 by 2. Now, the probability of A upon A, E1 is equal to 3 upon 9. That is 1 by 3. And the probability that drawing a red ball from the box 2. See how many red balls. See over here, this was uh, red was 5 upon 5 plus Five, which is equal to 5 by 10 or 1 by 2. And here there were 3 red balls from 3 plus 6, which is equal to 3 by 9. Okay. So this is equal to 1 by 2. Now, according to Bayes' theorem, probability of withdrawing a red ball from the second box is PE2 into PA upon E2 whole divided by PE1 P E two A upon E two. So this is equal to one by two into one by two divided by one by two into one by three, one by two into one by two. That is equal to one by four, one by six plus one by four, which is equal to one by four. And uh, that's twelve. So this is one by four divided by 5 by 12 or 12. that's equal to 3 by 5 which is the required probability so the answer to this question is 3 by 5 hope you have understood that as well with that we have completed uh, 
all the questions of this set three paper term two class 12 2022 delhi paper hope you have understood them well and don't forget to visit our website www.examsnet.com to practice this and many more entrance exam question papers you must download our app the link is available in the description box for better study materials so that's all for this paper keep shining keep rising high best of luck bye Thank <laughs> you.